Hello and welcome back to Chapter 6, Section 2, Day 2. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at combining random variables. As many interesting statistics problems require us to examine two or more random variables. In the situation we're going to look at, we're going to go back and revisit Pete's Jeep Tours. And Pete's got a sister named Erin who runs Erin's Adventures in a different part of the country. So they both kind of run the same business but in totally different areas. So we're going to go back and look at uh, Pete's Jeep Tours. And we got his data from before. Remember he had to take a minimum of two passengers and maximum of six. Those are the distributions of the probabilities of, that hap of each of those different events happening. And we uh, looked at calculating these on the calculator uh, that the mean... Uh, mean number of passengers he has is 3.75 of the standard deviation of 1.090. Well, Erin, uh, she's got a different tour company. And again, she minimum she takes is two. Probably got a smaller Jeep, so the maximum she can take is five. And the associated probabilities, again, each of these should be between zero and one and add up to one. And if we were to put this into our calculator and calculate the mean and standard deviation of this probability model, we should find that the mean of we'll call Aaron's Adventures Y is 3.10 with a standard deviation of 0.943. So again over here we can see the distribution of Pete and here's the distribution of Aaron's uh, slightly different distributions. What we're going to look at doing is trying to find this T and what we're basically going to do is we're going to take and add uh, Pete's Jeep Tours to Aaron's Jeep Tours and then look at what's the mean and the variance, variance uh, of that total. And there's a key thing there too. We're going to be looking at the variance. The variance, not standard deviation. Remember variance is the square of standard deviation. Or vice versa, you can think of standard deviation as the square root of variance. So, we're going to keep these probability models in mind as we move forward. So what we want to do is we're looking at a question. How many total passengers can Pete and Aaron expect on a randomly selected day? Well, since Pete expects uh, 3.75, that was his mean, and Aaron expects 3.10, that was her mean for the day, they will average a total of, and all we have to do is just add. Add these two means, 3.75 plus 3.10 is 6.85 passengers per trip. So together, they can totally expect about 6.85 passengers per day. Generalizes the following. If we've got any two random variables x and y, if I want to find the total of those two, uh, we just add those, uh, those two random variables together. The expected value, again, e here means it means expected value. The expected value of our total is the mean of the total. Uh, that's another way of writing expected value, is the mean of the total. And to find that mean of the total, we take the mean of the x's plus the mean of the y's. Uh, so in general, if you want to find the mean of the sum of several variables, it's simply the sum of their means. If you want to find the mean of the sum, that's what this is, the mean of the total, it's just simply the sum of their means. But now the next question is, how much variability is there in the total number of passengers go on Pete's and Aaron's tours on a randomly selected day? To determine this, we need to find the probability distribution of T. Okay. Uh, so we can't just go straight forward with those and just add the two standard deviations. We cannot add standard deviations. Repeat, we cannot add standard deviations. So the only way to determine the probability for the total is if both those two variables, the two random variables x and y, are independent random variables. So as it says in the green box, if knowing whether any event involving x alone has occurred, tells us nothing, tells us nothing about the occurrence of any event involving y. So in other words, if x occurs and has nothing to do, it does not change the, the, uh, the occurrence of any value in y, and, or vice versa, we know they're independent. In other words, one does not have an effect on the other. So in the probability models, we often assume independence when the random variables describe outcomes that appear unrelated to each other. So generally, we do assume the independence if we look at the two variables and go, yeah, they're not really related. But you should always ask whether the assumptions of independence seems reasonable. In our problem, uh, it is reasonable to assume that, that uh, 
the Jeep tours and uh, Aaron's adventures are independent since the two siblings operate the tours in different parts of the country that one wouldn't affect the other. So we have to look at that whole probability distribution uh, of the totals. So let me kind of talk a little bit about what's going on here. This one here is the Jeep tours. Okay, if we had two people on, uh, on the Jeep tours, uh, then Erin had two people on hers, we would have a total of four people on the Jeep tours. But again, we've got to look at the different probabilities associated with getting four passengers, two from each, uh, as we'd have the probability of the Jeep tour is 0.15, the probability of Aaron's adventures is 0.3. So together, the probability of getting this four, because they're independent, we can just multiply these probabilities. I can take 0.15 times 0.3, as we get over here, and then the individual probability for getting four total passengers, two from each, is 0 0.045. And that's plotted over here. Now, uh, in trying to shorten this up a little bit, there are a couple different ways they can get five passengers. You can see five passengers total here, five passengers here. That would mean two from the Jeep tour and three from Aaron's, or vice versa, three from the Jeep's tour and two from Aaron's. So again, we got different probabilities of that happening. This one would be the 0.15 times the 0.4, and this one down here would be the 0.25 times the 0.3, which is 0 0.075. So these two values right here, add those together, uh, and that would be our total right in here. So about 0.135. And continue doing this whole thing to get this whole uh, distribution of the probabilities. And that's a lot of work. <coughs> so we could find for this distribution, the mean of this distribution, and again, means we just add them. So we did that earlier. But to find the variance, again, we we're going to find the variance first, we would have to take each individual total. So I would like to take this total right here, this 4, minus the mean, so minus 6.85, square it, and then take it times this probability. I'd have to do that for the next one, is take this total, all right? Take that 5 minus the mean of 6.85, square it, and then multiply it by its probability. And do that for each and every one of these. And again, you can see that can become very, very tedious and very, very long, um, et cetera, et cetera. You can see this. If we did this, this would be our variance of 2.0775. And if we take a look, if we remember going back to the uh, previous problem, we saw that the me the standard the variance I'm sorry of uh, the Jeep's tour was 1.1875. The variance of Aaron's adventures is 0.89. Well, what do you notice about those two? Well, if we're trying to find that total, that total variance uh, looks like we can just add those two, and that would get our number right here. So, as the preceding example just illustrated, when we add two independent random variables, their variances add. Their variances add. Standard deviations do not add. We do not add standard deviations. <coughs> so, what we can do is uh, make a statement here. For any two independent random variables, if we're trying to find that total uh, by adding them, <clears throat> then the variance is just the addition of those uh, individual variances. So in general, the variance of the sum, the variance of the sum, or the variance of the total, you can kind of think of this word also as total, so you can even write that in if you wanted to, the variance of the total of several independent random variables is the sum of the variances. So if I want to get that total, I'm just going to add each of those individual variances. And remember, you can add variances only if the two random variables are independent. And you can never, 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 never add standard deviations. You must make them variances first.
So we can perform a similar investigation to determine what happens when we define a random variable as the difference. Now we're going to look at subtracting two random variables. So we can also think a little bit of subtraction as adding a negative, and that might help a little bit. So uh, for finding the mean of the difference of two random variables, again, the mean of the difference, the mean of the difference, or the expected value of the difference, expected value and mean mean the same thing, um, it's just simply just the difference of their means. And again, make sure that you keep the order important here for finding the difference of x minus y. Make sure we find the difference of the mean of the x's minus the mean of the y's. And this is kind of the tricky one. It says for any two random variables, x and y, uh, for subtracting them to the variance of the difference. So we're looking at the variance of the difference of the two is simply the sum of their variances. Um, and just kind of in a general thought process, if we're going to combine two variances, whether we're adding them or subtracting them, the variances should increase because we've got more data that's being exposed to. So that's kind of the big thing is here is people will forget this. Um, and one of the other ways you can kind of think about this too is if we're saying that this is subtraction, this is really like adding a negative. And when we square a number, uh, it's, it becomes positive. So we'd be adding the square of a negative, so be adding a positive. Uh, but if you remember just simply this, that if you want to find the difference of the variances, you're going to add the two individual variances. Okay. And uh, we'll kind of look at a problem now. If a random variable is normally distributed, oh, remember, normally distributed, draw that graph and shade, we can use its mean and standard deviation to compute probabilities. So let's do a little review of finding probabilities under the normal curve. So any sum or difference of independent normal random variables is also normally distributed. So in other words, if I've got two uh, individual distributions that are normally distributed, their sum or their difference will also be normally distributed. So we're going to look at a problem here. It says here, Mr. Starnes uh, uh, appears that he likes his tea. And he likes between 8.5 and 9 grams of sugar in his hot tea. Okay. Suppose the amount of sugar in a randomly selected packet follows a normal distribution. Oh, well, remember now, normal distribution should be drawn that graph and shading with a mean of 2.17 and a standard deviation of 0 0.08. If Mr. Starn selects four packets at random, what is the probability that his tea will taste right? Okay. So again, individual packets have a mean of 2.17 and a standard deviation of 0 0.08. He wants to get somewhere between 8.5 and 9 grams. So he's going to add four packets to his T. Okay, so uh, you know he wants to add four packets uh, of his of these little sugar packets to his T, and he wants it to be between 8.5 and 9 grams of sugar. So what we can do is we can just simply add for to find that mean of the total we'd add each of those. You'd have 8.68 is what he should have on average when he adds four packets. The variance, now they only gave us the standard deviation so we're gonna have to square that. We're gonna take that 0 0.08 and square that and then add that four times for each of the four packets to get a variance of 0 0.0256. Now we're going to have to square root that to get the standard deviation so we can do our uh, pr probability underneath the normal curve. So again, we draw our curve. We've got a mean of 8.68. He wanted to have the find the probability between 8.5, which is right down over here, and 9. So we're finding this shaded area in here. And we could use the z-scores to find out this information and use our uh, table A and chart to find this value here. Or we can actually use our calculator as well and calculate that probability using our calculator. So again, I would choose the calculator, menu, probability, distributions, and normal CDF. Our lower bound was 8.5. Our upper bound was 9. Our mean was 8.68 with a standard deviation of 0.16. And if you press OK, 
you get a little more precise number than what we did on the table. Uh, so, but roughly the same, 85%.